Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this Lex? It's Astro Aesthetics. Let's get it, baby. B, here, we got exclusive audio of Lupe Fiasco speaking on hip hop culture in general at large. We got Professor Lupe here. And before we get into this, Lupe doesn't seem like he was hyper focused on Drake and Kendrick Lamar. He seemed to be building on hip hop culture, media, sonics, all of that stuff, but on a whole other level. And he also seemed like he was throwing some shots at aspects of podcast culture. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Peep this material, America. Me too. So I've been following his career for a very long time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Drake is open for me to the point where it flips and I open for Drake, mm -hmm. right? So I'm aware of this dude's journey and trajectory. I've given him advice. It's a little, it's a, it's a little bit more nuanced, what have you. I'm not his best friend right. in any capacity, um, but I'm aware of him and, and, and respect him in a way uh, beyond. Same thing with Kanye, mm -hmm. right? Um, no, I don't know Dot like that. First time I ever met him, I gave him an award. Okay. For being the next big thing in 2012. Okay. I'm gonna let that sit. And I got the receipts. It's on camera, it's on tape. Mm -hmm. Right? If just by sheer mention of me mentioning Drake is a sign for you that I don't like Kendrick Lamar, you have to explain. It, it's not. That's not what I was saying. Okay. Because I, 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 be I just mentioned Drake buying. Yeah, I was trying to, mm -hmm. you know, if I, if I have the floor. You do, but it's shared. Okay. So, once you, I, I respect that. I respect once that. Once you stop making sense. I just don't, you know, I, I, my girl looking at me crazy. I'm screaming into a phone for me, but like. <laughs> yeah, look at you. <laughs> but no, so look, you said earlier, before I was a speaker, you said you're not really abreast to like the the overall public consensus of, of certain things. No, right? I, know, you're I know half the population don't like Drake. I know the other, but no, the other half does. But the nuance in it, mm -hmm. when for for me, like when when it comes to the purchasing of things, the nuance in it now is currently, I, at least present day. I can't speak to you know months ago or a year ago. Present day, a lot of the public perception is you are buying these things not out of love and respect for you, said culture you, that you have. How been. do you know that? Has Drake ever said that? Nobody, no. Like I stop, said, this perception stop, is stop, not based stop, in stop. me knowing for a fact. P public perception has Hunter, never been Hunter, based in that. Hunter, you've already proven yourself to be a guy who doesn't read the things that he critiques. No, that's not true. I just didn't read that. Right, you in a certain way, then it should be stewarded by people who know what the fuck they're talking about very, very deeply and can write a book about it. Being biased, but I'm being biased. But cool. But I don't agree with the process anyway. I don't think we should be choosing who comes in and out and making decisions based on that shit anyway, right? Yeah, I, that's real clear I, to me. You're saying if I, I had to talk about it, I will. Yeah. But if, to be honest, you don't really even think it's a worthwhile pursuit. No, I think, it, I think it's going to do more harm than good. And I think it's missing a lot of... I think you're going to miss out on a lot of beautiful things because of it. I think you're going to ostracize people. And like I said, it's going to be a group of motherfuckers who you think you actually control and shit, right? And this dude's doing 50 city tours who you ain't never heard of because they like, fuck that dude. I'm finna do this because I love it. But now they the out group, but they selling more records than you and selling more tour dates than you. But you the spokesperson for hip hop. That don't make no sense. Well, I appreciate that. It was a great answer as uh -oh. always. This is not... <laughs> I think I think this is, I think we got bigger fish to fry. I think there's other cultural things that we get that 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 us as black folks are a part of. I think I should do a rap that steady. the same fervor and uh, analytical and questioning who chooses who's in and who's out. We should be having those conversations with those institutions too. Well, that ain't gonna happen. Like, can't just, that ain't like gonna the happen. church and the mosque, right? I think we I think we need to start having conversations about them too. If we're gonna have conversations mm -hmm. about rap. Hip hop, not to obfuscate, all together, all of us. We still think Jesus white. It's crazy. <laughs> Colonizer, what? A picture of a white man on your chest. You worried about what song I'm listening to? Make a fish to fry. And on that note, for the people who, if you want to start choosing who's it, again, if you want, follow me, people, please. If you want to start That's choosing who's in and who's out a process which i don't agree with and I, I think is bullshit if you want to do that then you should have a degree you should have a phd in hip-hop if you ain't got that then i don't think that you're qualified and have the right to speak on behalf of hip-hop you're rapping hmm. you sold a bunch of records i still don't think that's i think at this point and to the point that it, it's it's to the point now where it's visceral and it's to the point now where people are making decisions on it and it's hurting people and it's building up other people that it shouldn't just be 
based on some nigga at a podcast. Now, Lupe in this, he seemed to be speaking on the values of cultural gatekeeping in hip hop. Lupe supposes, what if you have a PhD or some highly accredited degree or something and you need that to be a tastemaker in hip hop? Towards the end of that audio, it sounded like Lupe was throwing a little bit of some spice at the podcasters, at podcasting culture. Lupe seems like he was going in on anybody that forms an opinion without really analyzing what's being said. Seems like this was almost like a hip hop cultural case study on spaces. Look, that, that's just how I, I think that that's what they was doing. Make sure y'all check out the longer one. We put out like a 40 minute audio of Lupe talking to the people. Check that out because that, that more so lets you know the vibe that Lupe was on. And I'm not going to lie. It also does sound like Lupe was speaking in code a little bit. Now, y'all hear Lupe saying that if you want to literally gatekeep and choose what music you you sh should be curated on a cultural level in hip hop, you should have a degree. I couldn't get to the part where he spoke on Drake and what he said about the, the reasonable doubt masters in totality. But if you heard in the beginning, Lupe said he rocks with Drake. He opened for him. Then he opened Drake opened for him. Then he ended then he opened for Drake. He also bigs up Kendrick Lamar and he shouts him out. And he said that in 2012, he told Kendrick Lamar, yeah, he he next up. He wanted them ones. Anybody saying that Lupe was is hating on Kendrick, that's not true. This audio confirms that. He also seems to be questioning the the IQ of hip hop on an ultimately broader scale. Now he cleared it up, right? That he respects Kendrick's craft. He may not have an extremely close relationship with him, but he respects him. Then you also hear the gentleman speak on Drake and the public perception of Drake buying classic hip hop memorabilia. And Lupe asked the guy, how do you know that Drake doesn't respect these artists, even though he's buying hip hop collectible pieces? He asked the guy, how do you know that? Pretty much like, how are you forming an opinion on Drake's values, even though he's never spoken on his fascination with iconic hip-hop memorabilia? And remember, once again, Drake, he, he bought Pusha T's microphone. He got, he got the ring. He got some necklaces. Drake is buying necklaces, jewelry, anything that, that bids. If, if anything that bids connected to hip hop before the year 2000 drake is buying it okay just know that afterwards lupe definitely builds on how other institutions may gatekeep and he's like if that comes to hip hop it can take away so lupe is not saying that he 100 is is saying that that you should have like a phd or something to be a tastemaker in hip-hop he mentions that that same fervor and analytical mind that can be applied to other institutions and other f aspects of culture other than hip-hop because there these variables can also like indirectly and subconsciously affect the hip-hop community you hear him mention the church the mosque Lupe went in on white Jesus and the concept of, of colonizing. He says that we got bigger fish to fry. He even mentions if you rap and you sold a bunch of records, that's still not effective enough to critique hip hop. Once again, this audio is still a bit splotchy, but that sounds like a semi dig at podcast culture. I don't know if there's any podcasters out there that that got that got a little bit of friction with Lupe, but that was definitely him going in on y'all. So Lupe, to sum this up, definitely sound like he's going more so in on the the overall culture, the me aspects of media culture, aspects of the internet culture as well, all and how that affects hip hop. The audio that was going around attached to Drake buying Jay Z's Masters of Reasonable Doubt 
a percentage of it that does sound crazy the part where he mentions that if you're gonna say that that the culture is being gatekept well how do you get around people that you never heard of traveling all over the world all over the country doing shows making money and they're making more money sometimes than the people that you would say is gatekeeping it and then in in my opinion that's what he said makes no sense but it's hilarious that people automatically would think that he's talking about drake and kendrick why is that because drake is the biggest selling artist drake does tour more he is in people's faces more he released more music and look we know not like us the pop out show legendary moments all right drake and kendrick you cannot talk about hip-hop in the year 2024 without mentioning Drake and Kendrick Lamar. In that brief excerpt of the audio that went around that we put up yesterday, let's be honest, if you hear a snippet of that, you think, oh snap, he was talking about Drake and Kendrick, but that's because the numbers don't lie. I'm just saying, and, and, and we put this out, Lupe, he has a, Lupe cleared this up. All right, he cleared it up. He don't have no problem with Kendrick Lamar. He's not hating on Kendrick Lamar. He cleared that up. He's not hating on Drake. He was just bringing in in questions and saying great things that can inspire thought, right? But Lupe definitely seemed to be speaking on all aspects of the culture, not just Kendrick and Drake. For everybody out there, yes, Kendrick was not born in Chicago. Let's misspoke on that for a second. Excuse me on that. Kendrick's parents was definitely born in the Shah. And on another note, Lupe was mentally maneuvering all over the place. He was in his social experiment bag. Now, Lupe, to sum this up, is taking a collegiate approach to hip hop culture. And in this, Lupe is on spaces, right? Yeah, we're talking Lupe Fiasco. Yes, he's a, a fantastic artist, one of the best artists, one of my favorite rappers. And he's also an intellectual guy. So he's taking a, seemed like he was taking a collegiate approach to the hip hop audience. Regardless of the rap stuff, he clears up everything that we were saying, everything that the internet was saying. And Lupe, he has no issues with any of his fellow hip hop artists, right? So yeah, y'all hear the full audio in detail now. Make sure y'all check out that 40 minute audio that we put up that lupe that lupe and the people because with that one right there that's that's showing you all right yeah it, it could have been taken out of context but in the audio that we heard i mean you would think oh he's talking about drake and, and kendrick when he says who sells more when it comes to aspect but now we see he's re they was really speaking about gatekeeping aspects of hip-hop iq how people can rush to conclusions all of that stuff we need to get that whole that whole spaces and context now what i was going to say i think they did this in a way on purpose because this this room wherever they had it it was in a small i don't want to it was a few hundred people in there but this ain't everywhere out there for everyone to hear so we getting bits and pieces of it and it's Lupe, I think, was making a great point, right? He's saying that the concept of cultural gatekeeping, well, you, you got to get more people involved. It can't just be people in hip hop media, rappers that have sold a, a, a solid amount of records. He's saying that it, it needs to be more than that that goes into it. That can't be how we would define gatekeeping. And that's that why that. we would have some of the things that goes on because there needs to be a more expanded perspective on some things. Now, once again, that's how I interpret what he's saying. And that's why that's what the comment section is for. All right. Y'all know I'm responding to everything. I want to see what y'all got to say. Right. And once again, we ain't trying to start no rumors. Right. This hip hop stuff is exciting. Right. We, we it's exciting culture It's dope to to hear. All right. We going we could probably get some new top tier music. We need to bring in um, aspects of the competitive competitive rap, that aspect of the art form. But we also don't want people getting hurt. We ain't trying to be salacious and start any crazy rumors. And anything that, that we could speak out of turn and out of context, we have no problem clarifying and, and rectifying that. 
right? So I appreciate y'all. Once again, yes, Kendrick Lamar was not born in Chicago. His 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 parents was Kendrick Lamar's mom was born in Chicago. And we we know Kendrick Lamar is a native Compton, Comptonian. Yes, see y'all yesterday it was a lot going on, okay? It was a very um me it was a crazy day. It was so much things going on. So y'all know how it goes sometimes. And that's why we have no problem clarifying. Alright? So anybody out there, don't don't feel no crazy way about that. Alright? Y'all know I appreciate y'all every time. So make sure y'all like, share, comment, and subscribe. It's Astro Let's get it, baby. Yeah.